William Booth, when he would preach, he would preach until something broke in his audience. And if nothing was breaking, if everyone was just looking back at him going, what do you keep going for? God's not doing anything. He would yell out, pray! Who's he talking to? He was talking to the man under the stage. Pray! And I don't know what William Booth, well, I've seen pictures of William Booth. He had the long white beard, sort of the grizzled sailor type of guy. And I could just see him up there. Repent! Pray! There was something that could only be accomplished in those people's lives and hearts that was accomplished through prayer and not just through preaching. Preaching is a necessary tool that God uses to speak to the human spirit and to rise it up like a flame within. But the only way for that spirit to be awakened is for the power of prayer to move upon it. If if God's men and women are being awakened, it's because God's men and women somewhere in this world are praying. And so for the world to be changed, men and women have got to pray. Prayer is the initial movement of the Spirit of God. Then God raises up preaching men and women. He raises up teaching men and women. He raises up evangelizing men and women. But that's as a result of praying men and women. First, we need prayer. Then we have revival. That's always been the pattern. But there's a problem, and that is that there is a need for a man under the stage. If we're going to pick, and God says, do you want to be the man on the stage or the man under the stage? I want to be the man under the stage? It's a dignity issue here. The world, Christian world, who do we celebrate? You oftentimes will not see on the front of any cover, on the back of any cover, on the front of any CD or the back of any CD, the picture of the man under the stage. Hey, I don't want to be the man under the stage. He's forgotten. No one notices the man under the stage. I itch for celebrityism. I want to be noticed. I want to be seen. And the world will never change as a result. American Christianity is based on celebrityism. We applaud and cheer on the ones that are seen. And as a result, there is a difficulty for many of us, a wrangling within to say, God, don't call me under the stage. God is looking for men and women that will be called under the stage. Not two years from now. He needs his men and women to begin to migrate in a new direction, in a direction of anonymity, in a direction where the world may never know what they did. When God moves his men and women under the stage, it is never a popular move. I want you to realize the men and women under the stage are not just misunderstood, but they are oftentimes hated. Because you know what comes out of men and women being under the stage? Power. Transformation. Some of the stories I'm even going to share with you today. It's not just the men on the stage that are hunted and despised. It's when the men on the stage say, you want to know why there's power in this room and it has nothing to do with my preaching. It's the one you don't see. And they're like, let me at the one I can't see. Let's get him out of here. There's something he's doing. He's manipulating people. The power of prayer changes lives. It awakens something within them. When we have men and women that are praying, men and women hear, and they hear differently. The ones that are hardened to the gospel, suddenly there's a breakthrough in their soul. How did that happen? Just through raw preaching? Through raw praying is how it happened. The missing intercessors. I'm going to give you three scriptures in the Bible where God is looking at his people and he's in need of something. He's in need of something very specific and he calls it an intercessor. But when he looks, he doesn't find one. It's a fascinating statement. God's looking for something and he has pretty good vision, by the way. But when he looks, he doesn't find it. What is an intercessor? Now, depending on the church background you have, you've probably heard the word intercessor. But oftentimes it's merely associated with prayer. 
And I want you to realize an intercessor is far more than just a praying man or a woman. It's a man or a woman who is built strong. And I mean strong. Why? So that they can utilize that strength to defend the weak. There was a picture that we were talking about in our, uh, our Ellerslie time on Friday. And I hesitate to use it because I don't really like to refer to movies, but it is a really juicy picture. In Lord of the Rings, do you remember Boromir? He's sort of a, you know, an unhealthy character throughout the movie because he's really hungering for that ring and he's lusting after the ring. But when it all comes down to it, the guy stands to defend those little hobbits. And the interesting thing about Boromir is he was a strong man. And so the orcs are coming and the hobbits need to get away. And so Boromir stands in the gap in between the little hobbits and the orcs. And he's hit with an arrow. And he keeps fighting. He's fighting so that those little ones can get away. And another arrow hits him. And another arrow. And another arrow. Every bit of strength that was built into this man was called upon in that test. And he needed to have a lot of it. Most of us get hit with one arrow and we're like, oh, oh, mortal wound, and we fall down. Meanwhile, the orcs trample on our dead body and get to the little hobbits. But God's looking for men and women who are built strong, who stand and can take arrow after arrow after arrow after arrow after arrow and give time for the little ones that we are defending to find rescue and salvation. Intercessors are ones that give up their life. But it's not a meaningless giving up. It's not an untimely death. It's the fullness of time. Jesus was an intercessor. At 33 years of age, you could say an untimely death. No, the Bible's very clear, in the fullness of time. He was ripened for the purposes of Jesus Christ, for the purposes of God. He was ripened for it. We set our lives in God's hands and he makes us strong so that we can be spilled out. That's his pattern. You see, there's gaps. There's weaknesses in our armor. You can call them chinks. In a wall around a city, it's called a breach. But those gaps, whether it's in armor or whether it's in a city, are vulnerabilities that the enemy plays upon. And an intercessor is the one that fills those gaps with his own strength, with his own body, with his own time and energy. And he says, not on my watch. That enemy will not get through. And it gives the sufficient time for that weak one to repair the breach so that they now can stand, become strong, and then give up their life. I know most of us don't like to describe Christianity in such a way because it sounds like we're just called to die. What kind of message is that? Christianity, aren't we just called to live in America and, you know, have a nice family with, you know, the dog, the cat, the, you know, couple kids, and you know, maybe we have a few more kids than the rest of them, you know, because we are evangelizing in and through our household. But we're not going to give up our life. What, what good are we if we die? Well, talk to all the apostles about that. Who all died? You could say, well, what about John? John was thrown into a pot of boiling oil. And you could say, well, he died of old age, didn't he? Yeah, exiled. Every single one of them was removed. Well, that's not a good strategy by God. God's strategies are different than ours. And by the way, they work. So our human wisdom applied to how our life is supposed to work and how our life is supposed to impact this world. We have our ideas about it. If I just stay here, I make a lot of money and then I can support foreign missions. And God says, uh, I also need someone to go on the foreign mission. Who, who's, who's available? All of us are trying to build our little kingdom so we can support the foreign missions. Is any of us actually called to go into the dark place? I think so. But who's going to hear the call? We only hear the call, by the way, when someone's praying under the stage. I tell you what, there is nothing in us that will naturally hear the call to foreign missions or to go under the stage unless someone is already under the stage praying for us to hear it.